Now, as promised, um, I am going to take this opportunity, since I have the luxury of time, uh, to look at Pascal's identity just a little bit more closely because maybe it was a while since you had a look at uh, permutations and combinations. And I always think, we say this over and over and over again in class, that you shouldn't ever just accept formulas. I mean, I should say, we shouldn't ever accept formulas in mathematics out there in the real world, sometimes, you know what, we just don't have time to uh, go through the derivation of something and we're quite happy to accept that a formula will work on the basis of the data or the situation that we've got in front of us, if the shoe fits, right? But in mathematics, one of the um, design principles of the course as a whole is that we don't give you anything, uh, almost, uh, that you can't prove yourself using the knowledge that you have. So let's prove Pascal's identity. It's not that much of a challenge if you're willing to wrestle with some uh, factorial notation and remember that stuff from last year. So let's have a go. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to prove this. Um, this is my proof. Uh, by considering the left-hand side and then trying to progress my way to the right-hand side. So what is the left-hand side? Well, let's just uh, do a straight substitution over here. This is uh, where I'm starting from. And in order to get to the right-hand side, um, that single binomial coefficient, um, I really have to untangle all this factorial notation that we were trying to avoid, that we didn't need to work with in the proof by mathematical induction. Um, but in order to do this proof, we do. So uh, how do we do this? It's actually going to be easier if we do this right-hand term first because it's the sort of uh, classical binomial coefficient. Um, it's n factorial divided by r factorial n minus r factorial. So that's our definition for ncr, or you can see it written in this sort of vertical uh, bracket notation. And the reason why I highlight that is because it makes it easier to work out what the previous one is when it's got this r, pesky r minus one on the bottom, okay? So for starters, the numerator is going to be the same. Um, that makes sense, we're in the same row of Pascal's uh, triangle. So you get an n factorial on the top. Then on the denominator, uh, what's gonna happen here? Well, um, you can see from this right-hand term here, it's the r factorial, so it's whatever's on the bottom here, factorial. I can do that here, it's an r minus one factorial. And then I think I'm going to need a teeny bit more space. Let's just shuffle this over. Um, then you would say, okay, it's going to be, uh, how do I get this term? It's your top value here, subtract your lower value here, your bottom value, and then you apply a factorial to that. So what does that look like for this left-hand binomial coefficient? It's going to be n, there's the top term, take away r minus 1. There's the bottom term, and that's going to be, uh, I'm going to apply a factorial to that. So you can see there's going to be some... Um, some double negative business over here. I haven't, still haven't given myself enough space. So I'm going to want to expand that fairly carefully. So let's do that on the next line. Get that n factorial over there. And then I'm actually gonna leave myself even more space over here. Um, I'm gonna have my r minus one factorial and then uh, n minus r plus one is what happens when I distribute that minus uh, to the bracket. So I get n minus r plus one factorial and then I haven't yet done anything to uh, this fraction over here. All right, now the reason why I added a bit of a teeny extra space here is that what am I gonna try and do here? Um, I've got two fractions and clearly based on what I'm trying to prove here, clearly I wanna convert them into one fraction. This is where I want to arrive, okay? Now, just think about this, go back to when you first learned about fractions, I need to get common denominators, don't I? But there's just the additional challenge of the fact that these are very messy looking fractions. So let's start with an easy thing, okay? Um, you can see here, I've got an r factorial that I want, um, and I don't have an r factorial over here on my left-hand fraction. But it's not difficult to turn an r minus 1 factorial into an r factorial. For instance, if I said, oh, okay, I've got uh, 4 factorial, and I want to turn it into 5 factorial, the way that I do that is by multiplying it by the next number along, right? So this is my r factorial, just using an example of five, here's my r minus one factorial, all I have to do is multiply by r. So that's what I'm gonna do on the left-hand fraction. If I multiply through by r here, of course you do it to the denominator, you better do it to the numerator, then what I've got now um, is this whole term here will actually be r factorial. It's r times r minus one factorial. And I can do a very similar thing working with, whoopsie daisy, working with this part of the denominator on the right. Um, if you have a look and compare uh, this denominator here, uh, or this factor of the denominator, I should say, with this one here, you can see there's an n minus r 
factorial. And then this is n minus r plus one. It's just the next term along. It's a four factorial, five factorial situation again. So all I need to do here is multiply by the next term along and that will give me this denominator. So what is the next term along? It's n minus r plus one. Uh, if I multiply that on the bottom, I multiply it up the top. And you can see now here, if you're looking at this carefully, this entire term here, or set of terms, will combine together to give me uh, n minus r plus one all factorial. So that's really good. Um, what's going to happen when I put all of this together? Well, the left-hand fraction, uh, it's going to contribute n factorial r, and then the right-hand fraction is going to give me uh, n factorial n minus r plus one. Okay, so far so good. Um, that's the numerator. And then what do I have on the denominator? Well, the whole point of multiplying this side by r was to give me r factorial. So I'm just going to write that and I'll put it in blue so you can see where it came from. And then the whole point in write, multiplying this by n minus r plus one is to turn it into n minus r plus one factorial. So I'll also write that in orange so you can see n minus r plus one factorial. Okay, this is, uh, this is progress, right? Now, when you have a look at the numerator here, you can see there's going to be some cancelling of terms, and this is very helpful. Um, for instance, uh, if I just have a look at this n factorial r, and um, you've got the n factorial multiplying by minus r up the top there. So um, this cancelling is gonna be very helpful for me. Let's go ahead and expand so we can see it clearly. n factorial r out the front, I'm getting n factorial n minus n factorial r plus n factorial. That's a lot of n factorials. Uh, and then I haven't really changed anything on my denominator, so I'll just pop it down there again. Okay, so what's going to happen now? Cancel, cancel as I noticed before. And uh, perhaps I shouldn't have expanded this all the way because you can now see on the numerator there is this, uh, there's this common uh, factor of n factorial. So I've got n factorial outside of n plus one. And then on the denominator, I'm gonna make a, uh, a very, very minor change so you can see uh, where I'm going, right? Um, have a look at what I'm trying to prove. I'm trying to prove that this is uh, equal to n plus one CR, which means I need to find an n plus one on uh, the numerator, and I also need to find an n plus one on the denominator. Now it is there, it's just kind of hidden, right? This n minus r plus one, I can rearrange it so it's n plus one, take away r, and that makes the n plus one more visible. So let's write that in a more obvious way. I've got r factorial at the front, and then I'm just going to rearrange this addition in here as n plus one in brackets, take away r, and that's factorial. All right, I'm only a couple of steps off now, right? Have a look at this numerator. This is the same trick I've been doing, uh, but in reverse, right? A number factorial multiplied by the next integer along the line means it's that whole thing factorial. So what have I got on the numerator? It's n plus one factorial. I don't need to change anything else on the no denominator. This is the binomial coefficient I was after. This is n plus one c r as required. So as I mentioned before, if you're able to keep up with that factorial notation and the algebra and factorization and the fractions, you don't need to accept someone telling you that Pascal's identity is uh, usable in this proof by induction. Uh, you can now see why and hopefully you're convinced that this is a, a great way to prove this result.